All right, in the last video I did, I did a review of this Atom Stack laser engraver. Now I'm going to review the R1 Pro roller assembly. This includes both the rotary roller and the chuck assembly. Now the first thing to notice is that if I put this roller inside here and put this small jar on here that I want to engrave, obviously it's too high for this. So they have included four of what they call heightened feet. And these are just to raise this up high enough that I can engrave on something on the roller or the chuck assembly. So the first thing I'm going to do is put these in. I'll put them in position on the four corners, get this set up, and then I'll be right back to carry on with the rest of this. Now, with these feet in here, you can see that this very easily clears this particular bottle. And I could always make, or perhaps purchase, some feet to bring this up higher if I ever needed to do that. I don't really foresee that happening. You might have noticed, if you saw the last video I did, where I did a review of the laser engraver, that this shield is missing. Normally you would have that on there. And because it's missing, you want to make darn sure you're using whatever you have for safety glasses. This laser will ruin your vision in a hurry. It could blind you. So always wear safety glasses. I don't think these are the best safety glasses on the market. And to be honest, I purchased a better pair myself. These are made by Free Mascot and they are superior to these cheapos that come with the machine. But of course, these are much better than nothing at all. Now, with that shield removed, I can take this focusing bar, put it under here, lower this down by loosening this knob until it's on the jar, tighten this up, and now it is focused to engrave on that jar. All right, let's take a look at some of the other pieces that are included in this kit. Along with the rotary roller, we have this little support here. So if you want to use something quite long on here to engrave, and this is a bit of a mess. I haven't turned anything for a while. And this has been <laughs> engraved before. But you can use this support so that if this was long enough that it was going to fall down here, this would keep that from happening. It also comes with this small level so that when you put something in here, you want it to be level. Otherwise you'll be, if you have it higher on this end, you'll be burning more here than you would down here. So to keep it focused, you need this piece you're going to burn to be level. Also comes with a flexible ruler in case you want to measure something. It's in both metric and imperial and a small, fairly cheap, but no doubt better than nothing, caliper. Now with the chuck body assembly, if I put this over here, you've also got something here that will fit into this dovetail slot. So if I'm going to engrave something like this, if it's able to be in there far enough, I can use this just to hold that so that it's 
not wobbling around. And one thing about this is that it's spring loaded. So you can put some pressure on the bottom of a tumbler or something else you want to turn and it will hold it there. With the chuck body assembly, you get these jaws to use. There are these L-shaped jaws and what they call the ladder jaws. So you can put these in here, adjust them to different diameters of things you want to turn. Then there are what they call the hexagonal jaws. And these simply screw in there. If you put all three in, you can use them on the inside of something small or around the outside of something, depending on what need you have, what size you need. As you can see, there are quite a number of options on how to hold things to engrave them using either the rotary roller or the chuck body assembly. It comes with the screws, of course, to hold the jaws in place. And there are two different cables. One has white ends on it, and the other has black ends. The ones with the white ends are for the atom stack rollers. The black ends would be if you have something made by X-Tool or Orchur, I believe, a few different brands, and then this one would work for those. All right, to connect the cables on the bottom of the roller, you can see, I hope, this connection right here. And I'll use this end of the cable, being gentle but firm, I need to get that in there. All right, so that end is connected. It's going to sit in here. Take this end of the cable. Now I need to take the cable out of the gantry and put it into this end of that cable. All right. Now let me just turn on the power. It's going to home to the end of the gantry and the rotary roller was spinning. Now the first thing I'm going to want to engrave is this small jar. To engrave glass I need to paint that black. So I will take this, paint it black, and then I will come back. Alright, I don't think that looks too bad at all now, but let's, let's take off this paint and see what it looks like. I'll be right back. Well, I'm pleased with that. I think that came out fairly well. I did learn a lesson though. I had painted this with trim clad rust paint. It was the only thing I could find, and it worked well, so I may want to use that again. One thing I will not do is paint the entire bottle as I had done with this. Now, I used acetone to take it off, and it did a decent job removing it, but it was a pain in the butt, to be honest with you. So, I hope maybe that'll save somebody some effort just knowing that. But, if I do it again, I will simply mask off the entire bottle 
with painter's tape and then cut out a window where I want to put the logo or whatever I want to engrave on the glass. Well, that worked very well. But what if you want to engrave something that's much narrower in diameter? Adam Stack has come up with a real simple solution to that. You just remove these two thumb screws on the bottom. And then you have three other positions you can place this in. So we'll put it over to the narrowest one for now. Just replace those thumb screws again. <laughs> All right, so those are ready to go. But now, of course, the belt for the motor is loose. So to change that, we just loosen this thumb screw, slide the motor all the way over until it's tight, and retighten that thumb screw. And now we're ready to turn something quite small. For instance, how about a pencil? That will turn on there very freely. So let's find the opposite side from the Windsor plywood printing and see if we can't do something on there. All right, let's move it over into position. I'll frame it and then start it burning. All right, I am real happy with that. I think that looks great. Let me know what you think. Now, what if you want to do something that's not round? Something hexagonal, like the pencil that's on there now. Will that work? Well, let's move this over into position and find out. Well, it looks to me like it does not need to be perfectly round. That came out just fine. I have the tumbler mounted now. As you can see in the jaws for that chuck. And I have taken the cable off of the other roller and I can just put it in here. Hope that's showing up without my hand in the way. Just goes right in there. Now, what I want to do, simply line this up, this point here. I want to line that up with the lens, looking straight down the tumbler, to see if that's going to work out. I will also look across the gantry and down onto the base of this roller to see that it is lined up. Now I will take this down here manually. I'll raise it up to focus it. I'll be back as soon as I get this focused. Okay, I'm going to turn this on and then home it. Now I can use the light burn software to move this. All 
right, I think that should be good. Now, if you can see on the laptop here, I want to burn this for some friends of mine. Their last name is Knopf. So I'll just get my glasses on to protect my eyes, and I will start burning this. All right, let me just clean this up and see if you can get a little bit more of a shine on those letters. All right, I just used some denatured alcohol to clean it off and then soap and water to rinse that off. And I think this is looking pretty good. I believe our friends, the Knopf Kids, are gonna like this just fine. And I really like the job that was done by this rotary roller chuck system. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, I hope that's showing up. I thought I'd better go with Gail since not everyone would know what she who must be obeyed means. <laughs> well, I hope this gave you a few ideas of what you can do with a rotary roller from Adam Stack. Whether you want to engrave on a clear glass jar, put something on there, or on a pencil. This works so well on a napkin ring, and incidentally, you can engrave on a ring for your finger if you want to do that. I just didn't happen to have any of that size around here. And of course, these tumblers. You may have noticed this is not the same name as I had shown you when it was engraving, but then I gave that to those people and I just happen to know some other people by this last name. So hopefully they'll enjoy having these. Well, I hope this gave you some information that maybe you wanted. And now I know that there are a lot more things I could have engraved, but I need to get this finished so I can get on to the one showing the camera for this Adam Stack laser engraver. And I hope you'll join me for that, the next video. If you did enjoy this, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe, click the like button, and share it with others if you think it's worth doing that. And I look forward to seeing you in my shop next time. Take care now. Bye-bye.